Media about a few seconds ago. We're bringing both players' lists up on the screen right now. My name is Victor. I'm here with Travis here with VTTV Live, and uh, we're about to kick things off right now. So, on the screen right now, we have Troy, uh, who is the player on the bottom of the screen, uh, versus Derek McKinnon, who is going to be our Imperial player at the top of the screen. Uh, Troy, I think with the lower bid, decided that. Yeah, Troy with the lower bid at 381 points with his um, Mon Mothma MC30 Torpedo Frigate Fleet, a fleet which he has played many times in some incarnation or another, and you can actually catch video of it on our channel as well. Uh, he's going to be the first player. The objective is going to be. I believe it is most wanted is going to be objective uh, that's been selected from Derek McKinnon's side. So today's tournament, we've got 20 people at a store championship, which is very impressive. Uh, can, uh, some of the players have come from as far as Ottawa. They drove overnight to make it to this tournament. Uh, we have some other players from about an hour or two uh, drive away as well attending. Uh, in attendance is some notable players such as the uh, 2016 Canadian Armada National Champion Christian. We've also got the 2017 World Champion Norm is in attendance as well. Um, we're going to hopefully bring some of those players on screen in some later rounds. But for this one, uh, we decided we wanted to uh, showcase some of the more up-and-coming local ta talents. Derek is a player from Ottawa, came down with uh, two other people. And we're, I think this is going to be the first time he's been on camera on our, on our channel. So uh, Troy is a player that's known in the Toronto area for playing a lot of Mon Mothma. And he uh, he absolutely loves his MC30 torpedo frigates. He's got admonition and foresight. Of course, both very good titles with Mon Mothma as your commander. Foresight doubly so. You usually don't see that in a lot of lists that don't run Mon Mothma. Um, but uh, on the on the flagship, he is running admonition. Got Lando Calrissian, Ordnance Experts, Advanced Projectors, External Racks, XI7s, and admonition title. It's obviously a very tanky, hard-to-kill list. Um, sorry, that ship in particular is actually very tanky, hard-to-kill. And he's going to be relying on that as he closes into Black Dice range. Now, the other MC-30 Torpedo Frigate has Major Durlin, Ordnance Experts, Inter External Racks, XI-7 Turbolasers, Foresight. So Derek McKinnon's Gazanti and Troy's Foresight MC-30 are going to be the most wanted ships. And... The MC-30 torpedo frigates with XI-7 turbo lasers, uh, they tend to be better against larger ships these days because of that ECM. ECM, of course, is a way to uh, get around the accuracy results of enemy ships, but the XI-7 doesn't really care if you have ECM. It just says that, hey, if you're going to use a redirect token, uh, of which almost every big ship does have them, if you're going to use a redirect token where you're only going to be able to move the damage once around. So the trick with the XI-7 turbo laser torpedo frigates is that you have to make sure you're, you're able to hit the same side of a big ship consistently in order to deal that damage. So another thing I want to point out about Troy's list is that he's not running any squadrons, which is a very dangerous proposition in Toronto. Of course, a lot of players in the Toronto area tend to run, if not close to max, max squadron counts. Uh, and we see that Derek's list is a, uh, is a classic Sloan squadron composition. So it's got three ships. Uh, so the Imperial 2 with Admiral Sloan, Captain Brunson, Gunnery Team, ECM, uh, as we were talking about earlier with the uh, interaction between the H9s and the ECMs in this big ship meta. Always a good upgrade to put on your large ships. Uh, leading shots for that damage consistency, being able to reroll your big attack. And uh, Derek's also running XI-7 turbo lasers as a, um, as a way to counter his, the other big ships he expects to face and the Avenger title. Of course, everyone here who's been playing Tournament Armada knows that the Avenger title has been nerfed in the last couple of months. Uh, now you have to exhaust the title 
when you use it so that you can't double arc something and get the Avenger ability on both attacks. Following that up, we've got the Squadron Pusher, the Quasar Fire 1, with flight controllers, expanded hangar bay, boosted comms, and pursuant. Pursuant title, I believe, is the one that allows you to activate a squadron command. Uh, when you reveal a dial, you also get to discard the card to activate a full squadron command in addition to. So it gives you a bit more uh, tactical freedom when you're planning your dials for the Quasar. And then lastly, we've got a uh, Gazanti Cruiser with the Suppressor title and Comsnet. Suppressor title is the Gazanti that I believe it's whenever a ship ends up after moving within distance distance one to three of it, it uh, has to exhaust one of its defense tokens. So those two ships that you see on red on either player's list are going to be the ones that are uh, affected by the most wanted objective. So Derek's, Derek's initial deployment, just to talk about that, is a very conservative um, carrier and then ISD kind of spread out a bit just to, to cover uh, whichever direction Troy decides to flank with his smaller ships. Uh, he's going to try to push down the middle, perhaps try to divide and conquer Troy's list. Uh, Squadron's going to act per perhaps as the tip of the spear. Uh, of course, with Sloan's ability to uh, exhaust defense tokens as well as preventing them from being used on defense with accuracy results, uh, can make short work of things like, like flotillas very quickly. Now, I think what Troy is going to try to do, he's going to try to come at uh, he's going to try to come at Derek's list on both sides at the same time. Two Corvettes on the right side of the screen are going to try to flank, uh, maybe try to get behind the Quasar, get some rear shots, with while the two MC-30 torpedo frigates, because they're so tanky, they're going to have the option of being a lot more aggressive, maybe even ramming themselves down the throat of that ISD. We'll see what happens. All right, Derek revealing a, with his ISD, a repair command, just takes a token, uh, just some insurance for later turns, just moves straight forward to straight. Now with the way that Derek's fleet is pushing, I think maybe what he wants to try to do is he wants to turn left with both the ISD and the Quasar, uh, try to get within gunnery range with those two ships before Troy's flanking force of the Hammerhead, sorry, the two CR-90s rather, uh, are able to get within firing range of the Quasar. Now, of course, it's going to be a bonus for Derek if he's able to get that uh, GR-75 within firing range on the start of turn two. For sure, yeah. So uh, I'm also the de facto tournament organizer for this event, which means that if anyone needs a judge call, I may have to get up and away from the mic and answer it. So uh, Troy did reveal a navigate command on uh, the torpedo frigate number one, which is Mon Mothma's flagship. And I believe he banked the token. Now, as we mentioned, uh, Derek is going to be the second player, which means that with three activations, Troy has the luxury of not only out activating his opponent, he's also going to have the opportunity to go first every turn. So especially with uh, MC-30 cor uh, torpedo frigates that have such uh, nasty but short-range firepower, um, having, that, having that flexibility of being able to activate first as well as last in any turn right. uh, can set up your torpedo frigates to do devastating double arcs. So I think that's what Troy's going to try to do this game. And r really, Troy's objective uh, should be to uh, take out the ISD and then run away. Troy, I think Troy is just trying to be careful to keep the the foresight out of firing range of the ISD because, of course, that is the most wanted ship. As long as Troy is a la is able to uh, distract Derek's ISD long enough with any other ship other than the most wanted ship. He can go in with ship number one, get a shot off. Because he out-activates Derek, he can then wait until 
Derek has activated all his ships, then move in with ship number two, and then activate that. And hopefully between the two MC-30s and perhaps the cleanup crew of the two Corvettes on the right side of the screen, he'll be able to take out the ISD and then run away. Of course, he doesn't have any, he doesn't have any fighter defense, so uh, Derek's major advantage is the ability of his highly mobile fighters backed by Sloan's ability to strip away defense tokens and then eliminate them before they ever become a, a significant threat to the ISD. Squadron activation to the end of the round here. Yep. Lining everything up so that it's still in range for activations. The Sloan fighters are, are very effective against larger ships that only have say one brace token right so you can strip away that one brace token and then if you have like a ship that hits very hard you can follow up with a giant attack uh, and you can usually take it down in a little like in a maybe a turn or two but with something that has redundant defense tokens like mc-30s and even corvettes uh, they become a lot annoying because you have to spend so many uh, squadron activations just to punch through the defense tokens mm -hmm. before you can actually start dealing some significant damage. And on top of that, you have the um, Torpedo Forget titles, which grant additional defense bonuses to ships. So it looks like ships. Tri's activating his uh, transport here first. Yep. So I, I wasn't able to tell what the, uh, the command itself was. But um, he's being aggressive with his GR-75 because he has slicer tools on that ship. And so he's going to, uh, I mean, I think what he's, yeah, I think what he's looking to do is uh, see what's on top of that ISD, perhaps uh, hoping, it's the, that it's, hoping that it's a squadron command and maybe switching it to something that's not as scary. Derek's Quasar Fire 1 with the expanded hangar bay and the flight controllers um, I think that's enough between that and any squadron token that he has to push six squadrons by itself. So I don't think that the Imperial needs to do any squadron pushing in this scenario. Derek also said that he used the suppressor ability on the Gazanti to exhaust the scatter token on Troy's GR-75. And that's significant because of the Avenger title on the ISD. Now that that... Uh, scatter token is exhausted. The Avenger can fire on that GR-75 and doesn't have to worry about it getting scattered. Right. So this is the, uh, the Quasar that activated here? I think it's only if you move it and zoom it in. All right, anyway. So the card most wanted is, uh, it's been a rata. It's been a rata for a while now. Uh, if you were to just read the card, you would think that anything that was attacking a most wanted ship would able, be able to get an extra die of attack, but now that's been eroded to be only squadrons. But uh, So we're going to push on. Derek is still going after that most wanted ship. This is Mahler Mythel. Um, Mahler Mythel with his crit... Uh, sorry, Mahler Mythel with his ability to turn any uh, of his attack dice into a side with a crit face. He was trying to use that in com combination with Sloan's reroll, reroll and crit result ability to try to fish for an accurate result, to try to exhaust one of uh, one of Troy's tokens. But I don't think he was successful. Still, that's two damage. Uh, Troy's probably going to use Foresight's ability to spread that out a bit. Derek activating Colonel Jendon, moving him within uh, his abilities range of Merrick Steel. So that's going to give Merrick Steel an opportunity to attack again. 
Admiral Sloan is actually a admiral has been has fallen a little bit out of favor, I think, in Toronto lately. Yeah, which is which is surprising because, at least until recently, there were a lot of players who lived who lived in Toronto that were uh, dedicated Imperial players, and a lot of players did think that Sloan was the savior for Imperialists. Right. Now, unfortunately, we've seen we haven't seen that play out as much in the top tier competitive environments where. Um, the the winners of you know recent world's events as well as I think the European Championships have been some flavor of a rebel list whether it be Radis or Rican, etc. But that being said, uh, maybe the fact that at least in Toronto no one really plays Sloan anymore might give Derek an opportunity to surprise people again with some of the things that she can do. Well, one of the the biggest Imperial players in Toronto isn't in Toronto anymore. That's true. He also hasn't played Armada for a while. I was, I was talking to Norm. Uh, talking oh, I was, to Norm I was talking about Yik. Against. Oh, no, Yik plays uh, Rebels. Oh, yeah, Rebels? Yeah. I thought he was played. Uh, or is it just the uniform that threw me off? Well, you're thinking of the uniform from 2015. I mean, he hasn't, I, don't, I haven't seen him wear that Imperial uniform in a while. But Yik... Uh, I mean, Yik was the runner-up yes. for Worlds 2018. Right. If any of you watched that match uh, between Yik and... Uh, I'm going to feel so bad for getting this guy's... J- J- no, not JJ. I'm really sorry. The, the person who won 2018, he, um, he was also playing a, a list. He was, I think he's a guy who's no, local to Minnesota, I think. And anyone in the chat, if they uh, if they remember the name of that guy, I'm really sorry. I should I should know the name. He uh, he played against Norm, I think, last year too, and so he lost to Norm. But then he played against uh, Yik this year, and he actually won. It was a very close match. It doesn't really get any closer than that. Yeah, super close. I if, uh, if anyone didn't watch the 2018 Worlds Championship, uh, it was a game that basically came down to tiebreakers. Derek continuing his assault on the most wanted torpedo frigate. And I believe that was Dengar coming in with his non-bomber black die bombing the front of Troy's foresight. Troy activating Jaina's light. That's Corvette number four. Three. With a nav command, gonna bank it. And I, th- hmm. What did he switch these up? Oh yeah, I think he got them backwards. So, Dodon- Dodonna's pride is. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's uh, it's hard to um, to remember which one is which, especially during setup. But that was Jaina's light that activated. So that's in actuality supposed to be Corvette number four. Of course, Jaina's Light's ability uh, allows it to ignore obstacles, and its attacks can't be obstructed, which makes it perfect for uh, beaching on a rock with no repercussions. Setting up an attack run, perhaps on that Quasar, between Jaina's Light and Dodonna's Pride, he might actually be able to take that Quasar out before it does too much damage. But uh, in the meantime, we see Derek's activating his ISD. He's within medium range, I believe of the GR-75 <laughs> and that's enough to take it out so as we just discussed before the suppressor uh, exhausted that uh, scatter token on the GR-75 which allowed the Avenger to uh, roll like a madman and just wipe it out of existence with one attack <laughs> while Troy was setting up his flank on the Quasar Derek has kept his eyes on the prize uh, making a beeline towards that most wanted MC Torpedo Frigate. And, uh, you know, in a in a reflection of what I was saying earlier about what I think Troy's plan should be, which is take out the ISD and then run away, I think Derek's best plan of action is you take out the uh, Foresight Most Wanted and then you just run away with your ISD, just spam uh, engineering commands while you run away. Uh, you could probably even take out uh, maybe a Corvette or something with your fighters as you're retreating. So it's really on uh, it's really on Troy now to uh, to be able to 
think about perhaps is there some way for me to make up the point deficit that I'm about to get if my foresight goes down and I think the way he's going to execute that plan is by ganging up on that quasar and taking it out Troy just confirming that he is indeed out of medium range on the foresight which means that when the foresight activates he's not actually going to get a shot at that ISD but he can maneuver it into a situation where he can activate first and get a good double arc Troy is going to activate the Mon Mothma flagship which is number one he says he's going to navigate and spend the dial so maybe looking at perhaps getting a maneuvering into the side arc of that ISD would be my play if he's able to do it. Before he does that though, he's going to uh, take some flak shots at some of those, uh, those squadrons. So Dengar first, then Dengar from the side. And... Yep, tries to shoot at Sienna, but that, uh, that ability that obstructs uh, any shot taken at her really screws with um, ships that have one blue, or sorry, one die when it comes to flak. Tries to deal one damage to Mahler Mythyl, but uh, Derek's going to scatter that. <clears throat> I think the flak's going to be inconsequential unless he's able to uh, able to get multiple arcs with multiple ships down the bear. But, you know, Derek's playing the smart too, because if he keeps his squadrons in front of his ship, that's kind of forcing Troy to say, well, hey, either you waste your shots on flak or you, you can get yourself a really good uh, double arc on my ISD. And I don't, think, I don't think Derek has much to worry about with his squads going down. I mean, if it ever becomes a problem, he can just run back to the station and heal his guys. So it looks like what uh, Troy's trying to do, he's uh, going to try to take advantage of the high maneuverability of the MC-30 to get into the front of that ISD, get a double arc, and perhaps activate a first next turn. But what that also means is that unless uh, Troy is extremely confident in the survivability of his foresight, he's going to have to maneuver it into a side arc or perhaps stay at medium range or further of the, uh, the ISD too. So beautiful double arc on the on the ISD. However, that brings up another question. He did slow down to speed three there, uh, which allowed him to get in that position. But now looking at the board, uh, he's going to be probably forced to move that ship first. And uh, unless it's a nav command, which it quite very well may be, uh, it's going to be hard for him to actually navigate out of that box. Yeah. If, he's, if he stays at speed 3, that Gazanti's going to block him in. He could do something like go to speed 4 and then try to do a, a sharp turn as possible. But, I, I mean, looking at the board right now, I'm not entirely sure he's going to be able to do it. And moving that Mothma into the position that he has presents another problem. Where is his foresight going to go? Uh, we're about to find out as he does a navigate command with it. He's going to use the dial, of course, to get that extra yaw. So it looks like he do he stays at speed four, does a double tick. So that's, I believe, the last move of the turn. All the squadrons have already activated for that turn. So uh, now I think we're just going to go to dials for turn. I think it's turn three now. So it looks like, uh, from the other camera, just out of front arc there. Oh. So we did manage to dodge that with foresight. Now, actually, another thing I haven't considered yet is that uh, Troy might actually he might actually ignore the ISD with Mon Mothma and instead choose to go after the most wanted Gazanti. Do you think so? Like, well, here's what I'm he's thinking. He's gonna have other shots on that Gazanti. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, so he doesn't, <laughs> because he's, it looks like he's obviously attacking the, uh, the ISD with the front arc of his MC-30. Plus, it's also going to really suck, because he's only got one arc on the Gazanti. If he's able to scatter it, that's going to be pretty disappointing. Yep. Uh, Troy just spent his external racks on the front arc of, yeah, 
he spent his external racks on that front arc attack. So it looks like four damage with one crit. And he has, yeah, so four damage with the XI-7. He has an accuracy result, but Derek does have a, Derek does have a ECM, and he also has uh, Captain Brunson, which uh, canceled the double hit. So it turned out being only two damage, I think, on the front. And it does like look like he's redirecting. So yeah, he's going to the... So our left side. Yeah. Uh, so actually, this is... So now it's a side arc attack into the front. Getting those accuracies. Rerolling here. Yeah. It's better. That's five damage. Looks like the accuracy went after the contain. Uh, Derek's just going to use a brace. And then he's going to use his other green redirect token to redirect one of those. And I think it might go... Oh, yep, going to the same side. So if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's going to be shields down on the left side of that ISD. Now, the, the thing I was going to say, actually, before he uh, Troy committed to his attack on the ISD, between all the defensive upgrades on Derek's ship means that, especially with... Troy turning his foresight away from the ISD. I don't think that Mon Mothma Torpedo Frigate can take out the ISD by itself anymore. Which is why I was thinking, well, you know, Troy, if you're going to... You're, you're down 26 points right now. If you kill the Gazanti, because it's a most wanted ship, that Gazanti is going to be... So Derek's uh, talking into the table microphone. He says that the front shields on the ISD are one. And the uh, the side shields are also one on the ice too. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Um, if if uh, Troy kills the most wanted Gazanti, that's going to be uh, twenty three times two, because I believe it doubles the cost of the ship, but not the upgrades. So that's twenty. That's uh, that's going to be forty six plus comms net. That's forty eight plus suppressor, which is 52, I think. So if, if Troy is able to, was able to kill the Gazanti and then run away with everything else, he would win. The, the margin wouldn't be very high, but he would win. The problem is Derek's uh, highly mobile Sloan squadrons. And because Derek's already in the lead now, uh, it's, the ball's really in Troy's uh, court to do something. And that something may actually be, uh, you know, something that we pointed out in the previous turn is uh, <clears throat> Troy can also just kill the kill the quasar and run away. Yeah. See, this this is the problem we were talking about, Travis, at the end of last turn. He put himself he put himself in a position where it's going to be very hard for him to get out of that box. I guess he's deciding that he's, there's no way through. That's uh, yeah. Troy Troy saying that's the game basically. Now it was I think it was right for him to be aggressive with those uh, torpedo frigates because they're so tanky. But um, you also got to be cognizant of uh, activation order. And in this this case, I think it's the fact that he had to activate first. He put a ship in a position where he had to activate first. But um, perhaps he forgot that uh, the other ships around him would prevent his escape. Because he couldn't escape, he rammed the ISD. So the, the ISD took one face down. But one of the Achilles heels of the MC-30 torpedo frigate, for anyone who's been frustrated uh, trying to shoot it down with its super tanky defenses, is that if you ram it four times, it's dead. <laughs> and... I think what Derek's going to do, um, maybe because he has no other choice, is that his ISD is going to attack and then ram that Mon Mothma Corvette. <laughs> Those Sloan fighters are still swarming around that MC-30, so... Yeah, is it looks like he's going with the Quasar first? Yeah, that, point at it. Yep, activating the Quasar, Squadron Command, of course. Now, this makes sense because when you activate the squadrons, you want to try to exhaust as many tokens of the MC-30 is possible so that Avenger, when it shoots, uh, he can blank all the defense tokens on the attack. So that's probably what his plan is. Uh, 
I'm going to guess that's or, either, or... yeah, it's it's probably Valen or Howlrunner. Okay, so this is Sienna activating two. Looks like uh, Derek doesn't want to give Troy an opportunity to run away. He wants to get that uh, most wanted torpedo frigate. Looks like the accuracy was the result, and the evade is going to be spent. Using Sloan's ability, he uses oh, okay, the right, accuracy right, right. to spend the evade token. Looks wow. like another accuracy. Yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, Sloan firing on all cylinders here. So fourth, fourth activation. This looks like Merrick Steel. Uh, roll, re rolls a crit with Sloan's ability, and then two damage. And yep, going to use Merrick's ability to change it back to a crit. Troy using a redirect. And with uh, Foresight's ability, he can move it to multiple things, but he also uses Durlin to uh, cancel one of those damage. For the fifth and final activation, going to use Jendin to activate Merrick Steel again. Jendin and uh, Merrick Steel, obviously BFFs of the Empire. Very rarely do you see one without the other. So he's going he's gonna, to, I think, uh, get rid of an already exhausted redirect. With all the squadrons used, he's going to he's going to take a yeah he's going to take a he's going to take a most wanted shot with his quasar, so three minus one for obstruction but plus one for the most wanted. Looks like deals two damage. One of them gets thrown away by an evade, and I think that means that uh, that foresight is down to one evade token left on that ship. Side arc attack on the Jaina's Light, which gets redirected. Derek now, I think, uh, might be forced to ram the Hammerhead. Unless you can find some space between the Hammerhead and the Gazanti. Doesn't look like it is. Nivad666 says, great production values, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Armada is really a game that uh, we want to stream more of. It's just... <laughs> it does take a lot of work setting up the... Uh, the multiple cameras and also, you know, uh, getting everything coordinated to uh, to bring you some quality harmonic content. But we're glad that there are people there out there that appreciate what we do. Looks like Derek can't make any move, even at speed three. Ends up ramming uh, and doesn't move at all. It rams the hammerhead. Jarek Jeskowitz says, what's the mat made of? This is a six by three uh, yoga mat. <laughs> which we got off Yoga Direct on Amazon. So I like this I like this mat a lot because, well, number one, it's because there's no distracting art on it, in my opinion, um, it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on, especially on camera with all the ships and everything. Uh, number two, it's got a very grippy surface, so things don't slide around as easy. And number three, it's actually pretty cheap. Like we got this for only, I think, 24 Canadian dollars off Amazon, shipping included. So Troy, Troy's activating his hammerhead. Uh, he said on the table, Mike, that he forgot to activate Cham Sindela, which uh, I think he was... Th the reason why he moved his hammerhead up there is that I think he was planning on... Uh, he was planning on blanking all the squadron commands on the Quasar. Yep. So Cham's ability is when he activates, he can discard uh, a squadron token uh, and the card, Cham itself to choose another ship at distance one, you can change all the command dials in that stack to yep. whatever you want. Right. So it's very effective against it's very effective against ships that are dedicated squadron carriers because they're going to be spamming squadron command. Mm -hmm. So if he if he remembered to get that off, then he can effectively shut off squadron activations for like two turns. Right. All right, speed three, manages to get himself on the station, and uh, he's going to heal that damage from that earlier ram from the Quasar. Sorry, we, we uh, accidentally reset the timer, so we're going to get that back for you in a second. Well, no, yeah, I was just, in trying to fix the overlay, I had to reset yep. the app. I, just, I wanted to do it uh, 
So if the hammerhead dies, we actually have correct point totals. Right. I have a feeling it was because Cham's ability takes two different slots. Ah. So I have a feeling our importer had okay. some issues and wasn't calculating point totals correctly. Uh, meanwhile, Derek activates the ISD, does a repair command, uses this opportunity to repair a bunch of shields. His first shot's going to be a front arc into Mon Mothma. Always feel good to ro roll a huge fistful of dice. Well, that seems like a really good roll. Two accuracies, three accuracies. A double hit. So it looks like three accuracies and six damage. And I think he I think he's gonna he's going to lock down the evades and a redirect. So uh, Derek locks down all his green evade sorry, all his green defense tokens and with Avenger uh, makes it so that he can't use any of his red defense tokens. So now things look bleak for, for Troy, but Troy just used his Lando Calrissian, which allows him to reroll a bunch of dice. However, it <laughs> looks like Even he worse. gets the exact same result. Yeah. Was it? Did he yeah. already have the double in the red? He did already That's have right. the double hit, yeah. So uh, the, the crit was Containment Fire, which is he cannot ready defense tokens. So I believe that was his... Uh, oh, so he survives the round, which is... Yeah, but that was his second damage, and he's about to take a third one when he ram he gets rammed oh, right. by the ISD. At the very least, by the next round, that Mon Mothman's going down. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I think getting th surviving yeah. this round was the best he could hope for, really. Getting right. another attack out of it. And I don't think the suppressor has moved yet, either. This is a side arc shot on the uh, Foresight. He's already Avenger, so he can't use it to uh, prevent Troy from using any exhausted defense tokens. So it looks like one, two, three, four, five damage. Troy uses, uh, burns his evade token, combined with Foresight allows him to get rid of two, uh, two attack dice. Yep. Yeah, I, I mean, if I was Derek, I'd just go ahead and ram. I don't think he has a choice. Yeah. Now, here's here's another problem. I mean, Troy moved his hammerhead Corvette onto the station, but that that ends up being the same problem as the, the beginning of this turn with the Gazanti. I don't think Troy's left himself an avenue of escape with him having his hammerhead there. Um... Well, with the Gazanti out of the way, I mean, he could go and park between the two other ships. But I, I, I think... Right, he, then you just get shot at by the side arc of the ice. He's getting right? shot anyways. Yeah. I guess he might as well, if he can absorb some fire, then it's good. Yeah. But if, if Troy can somehow make the admonition onto the station and heal a damage card, he might have a chance. It's slim, because the, the fighters can just chase him and, and finish him off, right? right? Checking to see if there's anything within short range. Yeah. So Troy is going to shoot two blue dice at the Quasar. Two crits. Yeah. Bracing the one, throwing away the red redirect to move it all to the right side of the Quasar. Our right, that is. And I think... That's uh, interesting. Well, I don't know. I think... I think yeah, I think Derek would be fine with losing the Quasar as long as, long as he's able to take the, uh, the Foresight and trade. And Troy's just going to get the hell out of there. That's going to put him beyond the reach of... Uh, yeah, that's going to put him beyond the reach of the ISD. So he's still got the Gazanti and both Corvettes to activate this turn. Yeah. The fighters around to the front where there's no shields. Oh no! Blanks out. <laughs> yeah. Seventy-five percent chance to finish off Mon Mothma's turn. He blanked out. A little bit of bad luck. But he's gonna chase. 
He's going to try to chase the uh, the Foresight. He needs to make sure he's leaving it within activation range of the Quasar, though. Suppressor's going to Suppressor's gonna activate next. And I think they, they decided it's not going to be an obstructed shot out the side. Yeah. So it's going to be side to the front of Mon Mothma. Yep. One hit. And I think that's, yeah, close range. So I think he still has an evade. Oh, yeah, he redirects it. Okay. So remember, remember that uh, the Abonition has one HP left. He still has some shields on the side, so he was able to redirect it away. Uh, so he's not able to kill it this round. He's going to plow into his own fighters. I don't think that's a big deal, though. Remember, this no. in, in a pinch, the suppressor can always activate as a mini carrier as well. And with that, I think Just that's... Putting them as far away as possible from Foresight. Yeah, for sure. They've already all activated this turn, right? So he can't, uh, he can't move them and then activate them again. Jane is light is the next activation on Troy's side. Concentrate fire, spending the dial here. <laughs> Using a concentrate fire, adding an extra die. Looks like three hits yeah, and a, three uh, hits uh, and accuracy. accuracy. Yep, accuracying the brace. Uh, that was the only defense token left on Derek's ship. Yeah, so I was surprised he left the open shields on that side. Yeah, it's uh, it could be he doesn't have any shields left on the inner side. Oh, that's the, possible uh, too. On the left side. But what did it take damage from before? Uh, it took damage from the hammerhead okay. when it redirected. Okay. Now, actually, I I think uh, I think Troy should actually just ram here. Yeah, looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna ram. Uh, that's gonna put it's gonna put the quasar at five damage. Then he's probably gonna finish it off with a ram with Dodonna's pride. Doesn't even matter if Dodonna's pride is in uh, shot shooting range or not. Just rams into it, takes it out. Well, the only thing, the tricky thing there is Dodonna's pride needs a way to run at this where yeah. it would overlap with quasar, but it won't be overlapping with. His own ship. Yeah, it's fairly easy to do with the Corvette because they're so maneuverable. You just kind of loop around the back and then ram from the back. Troy did reveal a concentrate fire on the Donna's Pride, even though he's not in range. So with without the navigate command, though, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do what you were talking about. Yeah. But, uh, I think I think he still got it. Oh no, you can't do it that way. You got to do it from the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's got it. Yeah, he should. Troy's just trying to make sure he's finding the right line here. There we go. No, he took maneuver. a four. Oh, I see. Or he's going to three. Did he have a navigate token, I guess? Yeah, there you go. With that maneuver, Troy jumps into the lead. Uh, we're going to see if he's actually able to hold on to it, though, uh, because both the Admonition and the Foresight are being threatened. Yeah, the Admonition is just, that's a lot of points. Troy gets the first move next turn. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be Admonition, yeah. obviously. I think. Is he going to be able to take that? I think, unfortunately... Start a story down with what he has left. No, I, I don't think so. If he if he was able to bring both Torpedo Frigates to bear, he would be able to do it Yeah. with the XI-7s. But um, with just the one, especially since it, it's clear that Derek is spamming, uh, spamming repair commands on that ISD now, it'll be a lot more difficult. Now, that being said, uh, he has lost his Quasar, which... Uh, reduces the alpha strike capability of his squadrons. Right. The Gazanti is still there, and he can just program a squadron command right now and use it to finish off the um, the foresight before it limps away. And I don't think Derek minds too much if 
he lets either either torpedo frigate get away as long as he gets the other one. Of course, it's better for well, no, he, he wants, MOV if he takes the foresight away, because that, that I think that would propel him into right. a. Uh, I think that propels him into an eight, an eight three or even a nine two. I, I'd have to do the math. But yeah, things are looking very good for Derek right now. We're on we're on the top of turn four now. Troy saying that he's got to get his admonition out. Uh, he needs to save his his uh, Mon Mothma. So I wasn't able to tell what the command was. I think it's probably a navigate command. He's gonna first shoot at the ISD with the front arc. Yeah. Two Four hit damage. secrets. Derek uses uh, uses Brunson to cancel the the double hit. Brunson, I think, is one of the best uh, Imperial upgrades to come in. I think uh, a long. How time. many points is he? She's only five points. Now, I mean the. The um, the catch is that you need to be within distance one to two of an obstacle. It's okay. not that hard. No, it's not that hard. <laughs> it's not that hard though. Where she really shines is on interdictors because the interdictor title allows you to unexhaust her. Oh, wow. He rolled re rolled those black dice. Yeah. It did not go well for him. Yeah, I mean at this point this this attack is a vanity attack. I don't think he's gonna be able to do enough damage to it. He just needs to make sure that the Mon Mothma Corvette is is going to survive. The the hammerhead unfortunately isn't super maneuverable, so it's not going to be able to turn sharp enough to threaten the rear right. of the ISD before it runs away. Uh, the two Corvettes have a shot, however, um, they're both going to be blue dice Corvettes, right? So they have to get dangerously close to the ISD in yeah. order to perform their attacks. Here comes the maneuver. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that uh, that Troy dialed in a navigate command. Yeah, it looks definitely looks like it. Well, yeah, based on the fact that he's doing the extra yacht speed one, uh, things were complicated by having his hammerhead there. But it actually does look like he's able to to get out of the front arc of that ISD. The question is, I mean, I that's mean, not that enough. side arc is still pretty good. Side arc is at at close range too, so even with Mon Mothma's ability. The most he's gonna be able to do with his defense token, sorry, his evade token is going to re-roll a die, which may not be enough. No. I mean, at least it does force there to be a shot here. Yep. So actually, Derek, man, Derek, perhaps clairvoyant, yeah, clairvoyant enough to realize that his quasar wasn't gonna last long, dialed in a squadron command for this turn, so he may be able to kill two birds with one stone with this activation. Yeah, first activation is going to be CN Array going to the rear of the Foresight. Looks like... Looks like yeah, a hit. One, yeah, one hit, which gets uh, redirected, I think. No. Not redirected. Uh, I'm not... Got can cancelled, I guess? Oh, right. But, Maybe. like... Uh, oh, got Durland. Sorry, got Durland. Okay. Yeah. So Mahler, Another? rolling one hit, yeah. and I think that's curtains for it. Is it? One damage. Yeah, that's enough. That's it for the Duralyn. So with that, I mean, Derek jumped to 180 points, and I think that score is going to climb even higher now as he's about to take out the Mon Mothma Corvette. Sorry, the Frigate, rather. Looks like a Merrick Steel attack. Hit crit. Yeah, Admonition still has a lot of tokens there apparently, so he's trying to fish for a critical. Doesn't get it, so he uses Merrick Steel's ability to switch it back to a to a crit. Using advanced projectors to spread that damage around. And uh, I think that was his third activation, but now his fourth activation, he's going to try to get, I believe he's going to get Colonel Jendon within range of the special ability to double attack with Merrick Steel. Yeah, double tapping with Merrick Steel into the front. Fishing again for uh, for an accuracy. I don't think he gets it, though. Yeah, gets two crits. He's going to admonition one of them. Yeah, 
Admiral, Admiral Cancel said, I think, I think he only has one defense token left. Yeah. So now with all those defense tokens gone, uh, Avenger is going to come in, use, use the title to uh, blank whatever red defense tokens that he has. That looks like it's yeah. funny. Pretty brutal. Yeah, locks down the green redirect, and I think Avengers. Yeah, so he admos a double hit, but his remaining damage dealt one to the shield and then the remaining one to the hull. <laughs> that combined with getting ram three times in the previous turn is enough to take it out. <laughs> but Derek's not done. He's got a gunnery team shot, now, and now he's looking to hunt the hammerhead. Oh, just well, I mean, margin of victory is important. It is. Get, getting the 10 1. Yeah, what now, I mean, Mothma dying now uh, significantly reduces the efficacy of those evade tokens. Yeah. And really, it's. I think Tr Troy. Troy's just going to have to try to minimize his the losses of the remaining ships. Right now, 304 to 71. I believe that's I believe that's like the high end of 8-3 or the low end of 9-2. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's fairly academic at this point, though. Yeah, that's... Uh, no, it's 9-1. It's 9-2. It's 9-2? Uh, okay. 220, right? Is the Merc the shape? The B line? That sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I do like I do like Troy's approach in this uh, in this game. Uh, I think one one of the critical mistakes he did was it seemed like I'd, I'd have to go back and watch video game, but it seemed like he was he was activating his torpedo frigates a lot earlier in the turn than he could have been. Maybe. Um, and. And I, I, I get trying to save your most wanted torpedo frigate, but if he had kept that thing on target against the ISD, he may have had enough firepower between the two torpedo frigates to take it down. Well, I just, I, I also, I don't think he had ended up with a good line to keep it well on target. Yeah. Because the thing is, right, you take out the Quasar and you take out the ISD, you've tabled your opponent. Right. Because Gazanti doesn't matter anymore. Right. The other problem I think he had is... The Corvettes, I mean, yes, the Corvettes were able to finish off uh, the Quasar, but uh, they just, I don't think they ended up being enough of a factor in the match. So taking some last pot shots here with the, these remaining squadrons using the Gazanti activation. So I don't know if he's still in activation range for any of those. Squadrons. Squadrons next turn. It's like some Janus Light flag, flag here. Yeah. I think at this point, anything that's being threatened, you just pull it back onto the station. Now, Janus Light actually, <laughs> it does, uh, it, it can attack stuff hiding in rocks because of its ability. But I think at this point, uh, yeah, I think at this point, Derek should just he, he can he can also do something where he's rotating his fighters anything that starts taking too yeah, much yeah. damage you pull it back to the station Troy is bringing them back into the fight. I'm not not sure if he's going to get to accomplish much here. So activating uh, Janus Light here. 
Looks like Troy's going for broke here. Now, I wonder if uh, if Troy instead decided to go against, go after the Gazanti, if he was able to take it out, would that bring him down to an 8-3 loss? Yes. Yeah. I mean, he's only, uh, basically, if he killed anything. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a huge gamble, but if he somehow kills the ISD, he wins. He tables his opponent. Yeah. Yeah, we've tried. La uh, Jacob, thanks for the compliments. We've tried labeling the squadrons. It becomes kind of a mess on the yeah. overlay. Now we have a we have another camera angle that we sometimes switch to. Unfortunately, the it's a web camera, so it's not as um, doesn't have the same level of detail as our overhead camera does. Hopefully in the future we'll get a, a better camera that we can use and some sort of setup that allows us to use multiple camcorders we can get that side shot. Because the close-in action shots, actually you can actually see which squadrons are which. Um, yeah, but I mean, if we were to switch to it now, I don't think you'd be able to tell, right? No. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can kind of make it out. You can kind of see where Jendon is. The TIE Fighters are kind of weird. Hard to tell. Uh, we have a table microphone, so we're able to listen in on the when when both players say, hey, you know, I'm activating this fighter, I'm going to attack this thing. So. I guess he's going for a ram here. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, it looks like that that ram ended up in the front arc. Ooh, yeah. yeah, I think that is in the front arc of the ISD. If if I was purely trying to protect my MOV, I would have flown away. But uh, I can uh, I can respect Troy going for broke here. High risk, high reward. We're on the squadron phase now of turn. Turn five, I think. No. Yeah, it's turn five. Oh, sorry. No, he's he's activating his. Yeah, he's activating his Gazanti, I guess. Yeah. So he, he, he looks like he just put a token on the. Yeah, he's squ he squadron commanded and then used Comsnet oh, okay. to transfer. I suppose he might as well let uh, both of the Corvettes get in range. Of the ISD first. So I think Troy is navving with Dodonis Pride? Yeah. <laughs> At this point, I think he's just trying to kill it with Rams alone. That's pretty funny. Man, actually, I don't know. It's like, his best bet for getting damage yeah. to the shields. Well, let, let's see. So he uh, he's going to ram, I guess. And then that means if he rams... That uh, that puts the ISD at what four hull damage, so he would need to deal another uh, six, no seven hull to finish it off. Assuming no repairs. Yeah. But yeah, the, the ISD is about to activate. He's gonna he's gonna probably obliterate the Jaina's light, and then he's gonna just fly away. You know, the funny thing is, I don't think, I don't think I've seen a blank side on Derek's dice once all game. De definitely rolling very well. However, I think uh, with the number of attacks Derek has made, even yeah. if he wasn't rolling that well, he would have uh, been able to do well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just gonna, he's gonna smear the, uh, he's gonna smear that guy. Now. Um, I do believe if to, in order to get a 10-1, you need uh, 300 more points than your opponent. Which, if he if uh, Derek takes out yeah if Derek takes out the other CR90B, 
from Troy that would push him over the edge. I suppose that Troy is kind of in charge of his destiny in terms of preventing that particular outcome. Yeah. He can he can just turn away. The ISD is not going to be able to turn it out. Yep. It, it, it really depends on uh, if if the next if the next uh, command on the ISD and the, the next turn will be the last turn. Yeah. If the next command on the ISD is a squadron command and the, the two squadrons that are closest to the ISD are within activation range, then he can uh, dogpile the Corvette and then get that 10-1 victory. Well, I mean, the Corvette's going to be way off to the left by the time that happens. Right, but, but this is turn five, right? So, uh, yeah, this is, this is turn five, so he can just move all the squadrons within right. activation range and then push them next turn. And Dengar was already in range of the, of the CR-90, so he did his bombing attack does one damage to it yeah and now Derek he's just gonna I think I think what he should do is just fly his squadrons as close uh, to his ships as possible so he can uh, activate them with them next turn and based on the way based on the way Derek is moving his squadrons it seems fairly obvious that uh, the last command on that ISD is going to be a squadron command At least I hope it is because I don't think uh, I don't think any of those squadrons were fast enough to get within medium range of the Gazanti, so I don't think he's able to uh, he was able to push anything with the Gazanti. All right, turn six, and the big question is for turn six: Will Derek get a ten-one victory? So it's no surprise that, that Troy's first activation is going to be Navigate Command on that Dodonis Pride and then accelerate out of there. Now that actually does put him within uh, Suppressor range. See if Derek... Yeah, so Derek does remember to suppress the redirect token. I was mistaken, actually. He does. He is close enough to activate his uh, squadrons with his Gazanti. And so it looks like Sienna Ray and yeah, Merrick still going in. Gets his two dice attack. He's going to throw away the redirect with the Merrick steals accuracy. I feel like I'm watching security cam footage. I know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not ideal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I think that was a 10-1 for Derek. Yeah, that will be a 10-1. Yep. All right, so um, I think in in summary, I think that I think that Troy had the right idea when he uh, did his initial approach, uh, sending the, the, the hammerhead and the two Corvettes to finish off the Quasar. Now, one of the big mistakes that Troy made was that he forgot to use Cham on that turn, which gave uh, the turn with the Hammerhead when it was in range yep. of the Quasar, which gave Derek that one turn to activate all his fighters, which may have meant the difference between his one of his Corvettes, sorry, one of his Torpedo Frigates surviving for an additional turn or not. Right. Um, and then, uh, unfortunately, because he, I guess he got spooked, he had to turn away his Foresight and run away with it, which uh, cut the firepower that he was bringing to bear on the ISD by half, yep. which unfortunately wasn't enough to, to do no. any sort of significant damage. And then between uh, a bunch of Sloan attacks, Avengers ability, and just ramming the Torpedo Frigates, which is the Achilles heel of an MC-30, it was enough to finish off and give Derek the 10-1 victory.